Labor Day. Traditionally, the time of year when American voters begin to pay serious attention during a presidential election year, we thought we'd find out how many people are actually doing that. I've been thinking about it a little bit earlier, but not in great detail. I think the more it picks up, the more I start to pay attention. Yeah. I'm definitely still shopping. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't paid attention to one particular candidate as of yet. I'm waiting to see until it like dies down more rather than get excited for someone who's then not going to make it past. So you mean as the field is whittled down yeah, more? Yeah, once it gets yeah. smaller and there's yeah. less people. I pay attention. I think it's fascinating, our politics today. Is I'm going to tell you something. Trump's going to win. I have second thoughts about everything. Sorry. It's, it's the way I negotiate. Do you feel like you already have a candidate or two in mind or one, or are you still very much kind of shopping? I think being from Massachusetts, like I'm definitely a team Warren for sure. I like Elizabeth Warren a lot. I don't mm -hmm. think she has a very good chance though. Unfortunately, I think some of the good guys are going to be weeded out. Yeah. And gals. And gals. Personally, I really like Cory Booker, but um, mm -hmm. all subject to the debates and as information comes in and all that, I wouldn't say I'm sold uh, a specific one. You're clued in. Clued in. Locked in. Locked in. Got your vote all ready to go. Ready to pull the uh, the ballot. Well, he's ready to pull the ballot already, but it's, it's a few months before that. Oh, really? Time for the Sunday OTR roundtable. And join me as Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political an analyst Andrew Goodrich. It, it, this isn't the Labor Day that people start focusing on. It's next Labor Day when people start focusing. Well, the more right? people are paying attention than you think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. All right, so let, let's start with let's uh, paying attention. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the potential Joe Kennedy, Ed Markey Senate race. That's item one. Kennedy sure looking and sounding like he is up for it and going to jump into it. And Markey showing no signs of backing down. Andrew, let me start with you. What's going to happen here? So I certainly think that Markey is, you can see he's, he's running scared and he's starting to become a little bit unhinged. He even saw some of his staff doing personal attacks on Kennedy. So I think there's going to be more overreaction from his side. And I think Kennedy's going to kind of wait it out to see if there's a time to jump in. There, there seems, I don't want to judge tone, but mm -hmm. there seems to be a tone to Ed Markey's response to Joe Kennedy might get into the race. Well, it's because he's scared, to Andrew's point. I mean, the fact is, there's no question, Joe Kennedy's in this race. Let's be clear. It'll be formal, you know, in a couple weeks in September, but he is in. And now the question is, does Ed Markey stay in? I think it'll be an epic battle while both of them are in. But remember, in 1984, Ed Markey bailed on a Senate race, went back to his congressional seat, and he didn't last it. I think the big challenge for Ed Markey is, when you talk about the fact you've been in Congress for 40 years and you're still working on some of the same issues, how is that going to work in the age of Trump when everyone's hair is on fire and you can't do too much to change things. It, it, the question that I hear frequently is if 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 Joe Kennedy gets mm -hmm. in, will there be a Kennedy Markey primary fight in uh, next year? In other words, will Ed Markey just say, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to participate in the primary? It would not surprise me if Ed Markey just served out his term. Mm -hmm. He says otherwise today. But I think the reality of this race when Joe gets in is going to be a lot tougher than he thinks. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think Markey is going to be looking at the looking at the numbers and saying, let's just let's just roll the dice and take a knee. That here. first public poll that comes out yeah. will tell you everything. Oh, okay, well, speaking of numbers and whatever, mm -hmm. the ABC News Democratic presidential debate will be a one-night affair. It'll be 10 candidates on the on the stage together. So that means for the first time we'll see Elizabeth Warren on the same stage as the front-runner Joe Biden. The, the lower polling Democrats who qualified getting perhaps their last best chance to make an impression. Andrew, how big is this an opportunity for Senator Warren with Joe Biden right next to her? Right. <clears throat> I, I still think that for her, Biden just oozes likability, and she still kind of reeks of elitism. So if she can kind of show more of that likability, it's going to be a really big opportunity for her. But she's, I think she still needs to go after some of the Bernie Sanders voters and start saying, hey, I am the electable Bernie Sanders candidate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She, she's battled with Sanders before in, the, in this Democratic debate forum before. And she's done with him. I mean, frankly, yeah. she's gotten all the Sanders voters she's going to get. The only person between Elizabeth Warren and the Democratic nomination is Joe Biden, and I don't expect him to stop her. Elizabeth Warren will win the Democratic nomination. And the chance she has in this debate is to show the contrast between her and Biden and show a sharp contrast without the sharp elbows. Biden wants to be sort of a moderate incrementalist, go back to the way things were. And on the other hand, you know, Warren's clearly a progressive, big ideas, very aggressive, wants big change. It's a stark contrast. And it's the first chance we're going to have to see that in the ABC debate. She wins the nomination. Is she going to be the president? 
I think because no one, nothing's been done to secure our election system, Trump has the advantage there. All right, next issue is uh, what about the Democrats who didn't make the cut? <laughs> After failing to qualify for the ABC forum, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York dropped out of the race. A late TV ad blitz didn't seem to work for her. And what about billionaire businessman Tom Steyer? He came up short as well, but he certainly has the money to stay in it. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah. Well, I think Steyer's definitely going to be staying in. He still has some former Deval Patrick staffers on board, which is interesting that they're not with Warren. Um, but I, I think some of those other folks like uh, Bullock, Steve Bullock, mm -hmm. I think they're just kind of staying in so they can be maybe a possibly VP candidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marianne, what's your read? Tom Steyer spent $12 million on Facebook in two weeks, $7 million on TV, and even spent $10,000 on one 30-second ad in a Boston TV station. I don't know which one. <laughs> um, and he still didn't make the debate stage. So, yeah, he says he's got $100 million he'll spend on it. He's already spent 20. He couldn't make the debate stage, and that's good for democracy. Let's, let's talk about the polls, because most polls released last week had Joe Biden still holding a healthy lead in the Democratic race, but there was that one poll which they've admitted is perhaps yeah. an outlier. Monmouth University told a very different story. That poll had Biden falling to 19% with Warren and Sanders tied at 20, just a tick ahead. Yeah. You can throw an umbrella over all three. Marianne, now even Monmouth has called out the poll as an outlier, but the fact that everyone jumped on to it does that tell you anything? It does. I mean, Mama should have never put that poll out. I mean, the sample size was ridiculous and embarrassment and really hurt them. However, I think people are looking at Joe Biden and he's being propped up by these polls and he's running as the inevitable electable candidate. But there is Elizabeth Warren on his heels in every single poll. And I think the bottom is going to fall out for Joe Biden once someone emerges as a strong contender. I expect that to be Warren. And when that day comes, the polls will go kaboom. Mm -hmm. There is a danger in believing you're inevitable, yeah. isn't there? There certainly is. But I still think Biden's the, the front runner is going to remain there for a long, long time. I think the more people get to see Elizabeth Warren, the less they're going to like her. She just keeps moving up in the polls, though. That's fine. There's, She's in second place. Again, this is a gut check for, for the Democratic Party. How far left are they really going to go? And, you know, maybe on the two coasts where we're a bit more to the left, you know, maybe she's going to have that support. But I think, right I think, Biden's, middle, right? I think Biden is going to be strong right through the end. Right. There's a reason this is his third try to run for president. We continue on the record. <laughs> Stay with us.